Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 58 of the San Marino Challenge. As you can see, well, as you can probably tell by the title, today's episode is going to be the Super Coppa of the TIM. So, basically, the Italian Super Cup. Um, really weird, but for some reason it falls in January, and basically that means that... Uh, so what's happened is... They do have a slight break um, during the season in which, obviously, this Super Cup does occur. And then you have a, a bit of a... Essentially, it's the winter break. I mean, Germany has one as well. I guess Italy has one. You don't have one in England. And again, I'm not too sure about France either. But yeah, that's this is where it's occurring. And apparently, it's not being played in Italy. It's being played in the UAE, so the United Arab Emirates. And it's going to be an interesting game. Anyways, we've got a little bit of stuff to go over. As you can see, not the usual time that I would sort of make this episode. Uh, it would usually occur just after January. Um, so around this Parma sort of game. Um, but I decided to, to do the Super Cup because it's something special. Um, if you look at the lead table here, currently we are undefeated still. It's obviously way too early to even think about being invincible this season, but... I mean, we're 19 games played, and we're still unbeaten. We're on 49 points. Um, as you can see, we've got 10 points over second and third place. However, both of those teams do have games in or a game in hand. Um, so essentially, it could go down to about seven points, which is still it's still really good. I definitely think that seven points clear at this sort of stage, sort of the halfway halfway point in the season, is uh. It's definitely the the place that I want to be in. Uh, but yeah, possibility of an invincible season. Not going to get ahead of myself. Um, I've just said it because, you know, it's it's something extra to, to sort of push for and try and achieve. Um, but I'm pretty sure we will lose a game in the league at some stage during this season. Anyways, of course, we're into the transfer window, so we do have a little bit of activity to go over. Uh, one player has left the club. Uh, Martinez left to Crimenez for 875k. Um, basically, wanted to get him out of the club. He's probably played about two. Well, he's he played one competitive game for us, um, as you can see here from his career stats. One competitive game. I literally bought him on a whim. Uh, it was really cheap, 475k. So we made 400k profit. Um, but I bought him just because. You know, he was transfer listed for that price. He was obviously a little bit younger two seasons ago. And it was just, well, he was worth a punt just for a potential backup player if we um, if we needed it. Um, so he's gone. Uh, we did replace him. But the replacement is sort of a possible first team player, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, the first player we brought in was Brajin. I think that's how you pronounce it. 18-year-old Russian, right back. Unfortunately, non-EU because he's Russian, so for whatever reason, they're not part of the Russian, not the Russian, the European Union, so a little bit disappointing that he won't be able to be registered this season, probably even next season to an extent because we already have Britos, the Uruguayan wonder kid centre mid, uh, but this guy's pretty good. Uh, we needed a new right back, uh, decided to bring him in, three and a half star potential, Looks pretty solid. He sort of reminds me a little bit of uh, Nesic when he first came into the club. Pretty expensive transfer at 9.5 million, but I think I think he definitely has a, a pretty good upside to him uh, once we, of course, actually get him playing. Um, he's going to stay in the under 20s uh, for at least the next, well, for the rest of this season, and I guess for next season. I'm going to try and get him loaned out uh, at the start of next season, and hopefully he'll. Uh, find himself at a at a pretty good club on loan. Um, and the final player, or the other player, not the final player, the transfer window doesn't shut for like another week or two, uh, is Ivan. Now, he came in from Barcelona. Really solid. Well, he can play both centre-back and defensive mid. Um, can play both of them quite well, actually. As you can see, good vision for a defensive midfielder, deep line playmaker. Uh, but then for a ball-playing defender centre-back... He's literally got all the proper stats that you need. 
Now, his currently three-star potential, sorry, current ability is three stars, and his potential ability is four stars. Um, so he does have a little bit of room for improvement. 23-year-old Spanish player, had a few caps for the under-21s. Looks really good. I mean, a pretty cheap fee. He was actually transfer listed at Barca. Uh, 3.1 million is a very, very low fee for that type of player. Pretty big wage, as I mentioned, 32k per week. But yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the other player that we're trying to get out of the club at the moment on loan is Rogers Sunzu. Um, Genoa have come in with a loan offer, and hopefully he'll go out on loan, um, get a bit more experience under his belt, and we'll probably sell him off. His value is really low at the moment, so I'm hoping that if he does go on loan to Genoa, plays a lot of games, you know, builds up a, a bit of a reputation for himself, and hopefully we can uh, sell him on for a bit of profit. Now, the previous episode was, of course, the 2-1 victory over Celtic in the Champions League. We followed that, that game up with a 2-0 victory over Udinese. Both goals coming from Taylor. Nice little brace for him. Started to play a little bit more. Um, we did pick up an injury to both Gilles and Nesic, uh, leaving us with Pisado as our only left back. And, yeah, Pisado is dreadful, so... I decided to play for Marto at left back with Taylor at left mid, and it's it's worked pretty well. I mean, as you can see, uh, we you know we've gone on a pretty decent run. Uh, the next game was a one nil away victory against Lazio, Antonio the only goal scorer here, and uh, we also had Novi getting sent off with a straight red card. Pretty uh pretty standard, I feel like. Uh, the next game was a two one victory against Ajax in the Champions League again. Uh, basically, this game didn't mean anything, so I um, well, I thought I played a bit of a rotated team. Uh, I did to an extent, of course. We had Dalm in there. We had uh, Gilles at left back, who actually got sent off with two yellow cards. Um, Nolasco Ain as well, playing in there. Probably due to the fact that Novi picked up a red card in the previous game. Um, trying to get him up to, to match fitness. At that stage. Now I say that at that stage because Nolascoin has actually kicked Novi to the bench position in terms of our defensive midfielders. So good stuff there. Anyway, a 2-1 victory. Taylor with the opening goal. Vitek with our second. And uh, yeah, they got a late goal there. Uh, we then absolutely smashed Salinatana at home. 4-0 victory. Longelo, Nolascoin and Kozic with a brace. We then had a really disappointing nil all draw against AC Milan. I mean, not really much to say. A lot of the, a lot of the forward players didn't really play too well. I mean, even the the fullbacks didn't really play too well. Antonio with a six point seven, Nesic with a six point three. Yeah, pretty dreadful to be honest. Uh, we then could only manage a one all draw against RB Leipzig. Uh, really disappointing performance here as well. We opened the scoring through uh, Vitek. And then they got a goal back in the 79th minute. Um, albeit, this game also didn't matter because both teams had already qualified for the knockout round. The next game was a 3-0 victory over Sampdoria. Vitek with a brace and Sabanda also on the score sheet. Now, we then suffered, well, essentially our second loss of the season. The first of which came in the Super Cup. The UEFA Super Cup against Barca. But yeah, we managed to lose to Serie B team Palermo in the TAM Cup first round. So, unfortunately, we won't be retaining our domestic cup. This game, I have to say, was absolute FMBS because... It, well, we lost on penalties, so we'll say that. But I'll show you the match stats because... Ugh, it honestly just does my head in. 35 shots... With 10 on target. I mean, that that in itself. 35 shots with only 10 on target. It just really pisses me off. But yeah, to have sh 10 shots on target and not be able to score two goals as well is another, another thing. It's just another thing, basically. And then for them to score one goal from three shots on target, sure, that's, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, one in three, I guess. Um, although, when you consider what we had... Um, it's pretty dreadful. 
And yeah, then Viviani, our captain, misses a penalty, and Renault also misses a penalty. I don't know. It's it was one of those games. Um, I, obviously, I played a a few of the younger players in there, so it probably is a little bit due to that. But again, we shouldn't be losing a game like that at all. Um, so it was it was a surprise. It was definitely. Uh, we did bounce back, however, in the next game. Still a little bit shaky. A three-two away victory against Pescara. Um, as you can see, Dom got himself a brace in this game. Pretty impressive. Coming actually, he started the game. That's right. I decided to keep him in there uh, for whatever reason. Pescara obviously aren't too too good, despite you know scoring two goals against us. And then uh, we also had Feist in there um, just to give Antonio a bit of a rest. And he also scored, so good stuff from him. Um, and yeah, they got two goals back. They scored. They actually opened the scoring in the ninth minute, and then they got their second goal in the 88th minute. And they also had a player sent off in the 91st minute. So. A pretty exciting game, um, obviously a bit shaky from our defense. Of course, we had Vicini in there with a 6.2 rating, representing San Marino very proudly. That was sarcasm. Um, anyway, the next game was much more convincing. A 4-0 victory over Cagliari, Viviani, Longelo, Taylor, and Valson on the score sheet. Good to see Valson there. Um, I believe he came off the bench and got an 8.1 and a goal for his, for his efforts. And the final game just played was a 1-0 victory over Bologna. Antonio was the only goal scorer in that one. Alrighty, let's get into the lineup. Um, just looking at the lineup here, I mean, it's not really too changed. Like I mentioned, Alaskwain's sort of the starting defensive midfielder now. Uh, the only player that really misses out that you guys would sort of be familiar with is Viviani. Uh, we're bringing Valston in. Um, unfortunately, Sabanda's picked up a four-month injury, and I was literally about to sell him to Bournemouth just before he picked it up. So, yeah, that was that was really disappointing because he's valued at like 18 million, and I think I could have maybe got about 25 to 30 out of Bournemouth for him. So... That really sucked because <laughs> that's a it's a pretty good price for for Sabanda, who is a great player. Don't get me wrong; he's a good player, not a great player. He's a good player, a good player. Um, but for that money, we could reinvest all of it and buy a proper wonder kid, potential world class player in the future. Anyway, let's go through the lineup. Ingvarsson in goals. We're going to go with Antonio at right back, Nesic at left back, and then Squizato and Armini. As our two center defenders, and the last coin, as I mentioned, will be the deep line playmaker today. We're then going to go with Valson and Kozic as the two center mids. Renault on the right wing, Fumato on the left wing, and then Longelo up front. The bench today is going to be Marino Ivan, possibly getting his uh, debut here today. And then we're going to go with Feist, Novi, Taylor, Vitek, Dom, Vicini, Sunzu, Ugolini, Albani, and Gil who's just come back from injury, of course. Um, actually, both him and Nesic have just come back from injury. So good for them to, to be in the, in the... Well, one of them to be in the starting lineup and the other one to actually be on the bench. Okay, apparently expecting them to win has confused Antonio for some reason. Another thing uh, worth mentioning is, you know... Cult hero, Labadee, his contract is running out, and I tried, I really did try uh, to bring him into the club on a free transfer, and unfortunately, he just wants too much money. He wants 115k per week, which obviously, we're already paying Taylor 100k per week as a left winger. We have Fumato, who is on peanuts at the moment, but he, he's been asking for a new contract. Valued at 49 mil, so we're probably going to have to sell for Mato. Which I really don't want to do because, you know, he is a hero. He's essentially the reason as to why we did the treble last, se uh, last year, last season. Yeah, I don't know. It's just going to be a tough one. Um, Armini is another one. Uh, Shanghai, SIPG. Uh, they're coming in with offers for him at the moment. Um, they're trying to, yeah, they're pushing pretty hard. Uh, which 
scares me a little bit. But then, of course, we signed Ivan, who I think is a a ready-made replacement instead of trying to play the youth players as a centre back. Um, of course, that's that's a little risky to do that, and I don't really want to risk Syria. Oh, what a goal by Kozic there! Wow, Longelo with the assist, but beautiful goal. Beautiful. It was like a half volley. Really tidy finish. Can we push on and get another goal? That is the question. Roma, they're definitely not the, the club they used to be, or they were at the start of the game. Um, they're sort of a bit of a shadow of their former self. Obviously, me saying that's probably going to come back to bite me in the ass a little bit. Renault, Fumato, that's odd. He doesn't usually miss those, so... Um, maybe he's not on his on his game today. Just going to tell Armini to ease off the tackles as well. Now, the thing with Armini is I kind of do want to sell him. Formato, Longelo. Oh. Yeah, I do want to sell him because he's valued at like 24 million at the moment. And he's on like, I think he's either on 90k or 70k. I can't remember. Uh, but his wage is pretty big. And he's, he's a good player. Like, he's a really solid center back. Don't get me wrong. He's also... Him and Squizato are part of the reasons well, as to why we did so well last season. You know, the defense was very solid. Longelo gets in there. Fumato with the assist. 2-0 to San Marino. But yeah, like the Chinese money is coming in. Like it's it's gonna be hard to hard to keep rejecting it. Uh, we're gonna make some subs here as well. Um I kinda wanna bring Gil on for Nesic. Not playing too well. Maybe Valsen can come off, although we don't really have anyone to bring on. Let's bring Novi on for Nalascoin, and I think we'll leave it at that for now. We might make another sub at 75 minutes. Uh, we might bring Vicini or Veteron, depending on who's uh, who's playing worse out of the two centre-backs. Can we push on and get a third goal, though? That would be... That'd be very good. Longelo... To Formato. Oh, nice little... Cr oh, what a cross. Formato with a cheeky little pullback. And Antonio blasts it in the back of the net. And we're 3-0 up in the... Super... Well, TIM Supercopper. Supercopper TIM. As uh, Valson picks up a yellow card there as well. Worth mentioning that uh, Valson has actually... Uh, really improved. A lot of his attributes are going up. Um, a lot of the, the he's been getting a fair bit of game time. It's it's worth noting. Um, we also have sort of a forgotten man, but Petra Cevic is still in the under twenties. Of course, the well, he's now twenty. I think he's twenty. He might be twenty one, but the Croatian centre mid, Formato, uh, pretty good save there by their goalkeeper. Obviously, you want to try and try and get as many goals as we possibly can. We might make that substitution here. Let's wait for this highlight. Longelo, it's a good tackle. Back post, Renault just sneaks it in. 4-0. This is what I mean. Roma, they're just not what they used to be. They're really not. And it's kind of unfortunate um, because I, I, I personally like Roma as a club. Actually, do you know what? Should we give Ivan his debut? No, I don't think we will. We might actually just go with Ugolini. Ugolini? No. Hold on, hold on. Who do I want to bring on? Yeah, we'll go with Ugolini. I don't really play him too much. He plays a lot in the out-of-20s, but we'll give him the uh, the opportunity to showcase himself. He obviously can't do too badly because we're already 4-0 up, so we're not going to lose the game by bringing him on. So that's uh, somewhat of a... A positive, I guess. Formato's picked up a yellow card there as well. Probably not going to bother with that. Although, suspensions probably do carry over. As this is, you know, essentially an Italian competition. And there we go, guys. A 4-0 victory in the Super Copper. Really happy with that result. Like I said, I mean... It's just kind of unfortunate that Roma... They're not the... The team they used to be. But yeah, I mean, it's another trophy in the cabinet for us. Um, 
and yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to say apart from that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a like as well. I mean, a 4-0 victory definitely deserves a like. But yeah, subscribe as well. Hit the notification bell. That should keep you up to date with all the episodes coming out in the future. And apart from that, take it easy and goodbye.